Okay, so we are about to start. So participants will have your attention. Um, our forum is about to begin. So good evening, everyone. So I would like to welcome all of you to this forum discussion. So before we proceed, let me introduce myself. I'm Shamira Nasri, and I will be moderating for the forum tonight. So first of all, I would actually um, like to give a brief introduction on what Hall of Aspire is all about. So Hall of Aspire is a forum platform where we are organized by Altruistic Malaysia, which is an NGO. Um, which is essential in a process of giving all people access to knowledge and also information. So this platform is actually needed more than ever uh, in digital ways. So most importantly, uh, Hall of Aspire is the place where you can find critical topics or cause that needs to be discussed. And uh, nowadays, um, uh, on the digital day, so the topics that we discuss will be uh, discussed on a specific prospects such as peace, uh, education, environment, health, humanitarian, and so on. So today, we are going to discuss on social enterprise. So social enterprise or social entrepreneurship is a process by which uh, individual startups and also entrepreneurship develop and fund solutions that directly addresses social issues. So uh, or as social issues. Um, so to discuss more on this topic, I have two, three panels actually tonight. So the first panelist that we have is uh, Miss Noor, Mrs. Noor Dini Mohamad Fadil, founder, at, founder of Toki Enterprise. And then we have Mr. Zahabi Zainuddin, CEO and also co-founder of Food Lab. And then last but not the least, we have Mr. Muhammad Faris, uh, operating officer of Pytopia, or also as known as Salad Bar, which is operating currently at UMK Jenny. So, Without further ado, I think we should jump into right right into our question. So the first question I have right now is uh, generally to all of you. Uh, what are the differences uh, between social enterprise and also social entrepreneurship? So I think we'll go with uh, Ms. Dini first. Oh, all right. Thank you so much, Shamira, for the question. As um, we had a conversation before the live began, as Habi said that, uh, you know, we cannot they're kind of not familiar with each other. But yeah, I actually, uh, for Tokyo, especially, we just started in 2020. But I have been, you know, working with social enterprise back then in the UK when I was studying uh, at University of Essex. I'm joining Enactus Essex. So uh, uh, I, you know, I actively just a bit of developing my understanding uh, of what is social enterprise. And then then I had the confidence to, you know, um, founded my own social enterprise with uh, my partner, Najwa Kanam. So, um, Toki uh, is a social enterprise uh, that founded in Greece, Milan. So, we're helping uh, young women and mothers. So, our focus of beneficiaries will be young women and mothers who are uh, coming from B40 families and also M40 families who does not have job. So, how we, uh, how we did that, how we tackled the entrepreneurship back then is uh, by giving them an opportunity to join our catering session. Uh, for example, during Ramadan, we had a um, uh, uh, buffet Ramadan, so we hired them to work with us. And then we uh, and then we had a few projects called Bandera Pute and so on to help people in Negrisma. So you, we use them as a volunteers, paid volunteers. So uh, that's how we're creating job for now. And currently, we, we are focusing on to um, make um, you know, uh, introducing VR products, our beneficiary product. We have uh, three beneficiaries for now. We had uh, someone who, who can bake uh, a cake. We had someone who can make a sambal, and then we had someone that can uh, bake. Ice cream. So we, we just uh, uh, satukan all the products and sell it to our clients. Uh. So we are the bridge of the track of our to our clients, our customers. Um, to answer your question about social enterprise and social entrepreneurship, it actually is the same thing. So this, that this is uh, from uh, my opinion. So it's actually the same thing. But what makes different is uh, social innovation is all about the idea. So everyone can you know can have that strong idea. But how to get that strong idea is for you to tackle the issues in the certain area. So for example, for me at Tokyo is. Uh, the the problem in the Greece Milan that I focusly on uh, focus focusly focus on uh, Kuala Pilah and Seremban is uh, we had Ibu Tunggal 
uh, B40 mothers uh, and young women who does not have job, who does not have, the, uh, who does, does not know their right. So what we do is to, uh, what we do, we have uh, some bank care, some uh, macam forum and all for them, not just to know the entrepreneurship side, but also to know their rights as a woman. So as for example, like you know, uh, the cases of sexual abuse, the cases of uh, sexual harassment is, is increasing during pandemic. So they don't know how to reach. And we are the, well, uh, with our volunteers who came in from lawyers and all, they are the experts to give them support. And also how to tackle economic side of it is to teach them on how to, um, you know, to sell something or maybe to, um, to market themselves because all of them are their skills, different skills, different skills like um, like many of them have the different different skills. So we crank them into one place and meet our clients and meet our mentors. So our mentors now is uh, Panazlina Zube. She's the Lia, uh, she's the founder and CEO of Lia Jati Security in Laka. And we had uh, some of our tech mentors. Uh, as you can see, maybe for people who are watching today, uh, you guys can go to Toke, uh, sorry, www.toke.my. We have that all the information about Toke there. So we just found it again, Zavi, we just found it uh, during 2020. We're new in this and um, still learning for that. Lah. I don't get any SE things and all, still doing it. Lah. So inshallah in 2022, we're gonna kick start, you know, collaborating with Masala Wheels, uh, Food Lab, inshallah one day. So like, uh, because we find that in Igros Milan, people do, that people not familiar with this kind of approach, business approach, but as you can see in the Greece Milan, there were a lot of, you know, pasar pasar tepi jalan and all. There were a lot of entrepreneurship, economic um, activities happening. But they don't know how to, you know, to market themselves, how to tackle that thing, how to, there's a lot of things. So, yeah, to answer your question, of course, social entrepreneur, social, social entrepreneurship is different than, inter, different than any entrepreneurship style. But what is important is for us to impact their life lah. So our beneficiaries life from here to go here, the, the stages of we we helping them since the beginning of they don't know anything from zero to a hero, something like that. So that is why I I I I developed my interest to you know to go through this to chuburi this bidang lah. Yep. Hope this answer answer your question. Oh, you definitely did answer my question. So next I think we're gonna jump into Mr. Zahavi. Maybe you could share a little bit insight on what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, thank you, Shamira. So, if you ask me about uh, the difference, right, I think the only difference is, uh, you know, uh, it's incorporated. So, a social enterprise is something that you actually officially incorporated, whether you have, like, in terms of uh, partnership, sole prop, or even uh, Sunday Merahat, right? Uh, and when you are um, already incorporated, you either wanted to be, um, you know, uh, officially uh, uh, placed under uh, social enterprise, uh, where you get accreditation. So when you get accreditation uh, in under, last time it's under uh, MAGIC and now it's under MEDEC. So you will start under SE Basic, um, as, uh, Social Enterprise Accreditation, and the last one is Social Enterprise uh, Accreditation Plus, which uh, different, uh, different level, level one, level two, level three, you have different kind of uh, you know, uh, benefit that you can able to achieve. So in terms of entrepreneurship, uh, I can say social entrepreneurship is more about, you know, first thing first, you're about, uh, about your business model, right? And then it's about your beneficiary, your stakeholders. You know, it's more than just the stakeholders uh, it, when you have that beneficiary to whom you wanted to impact. So that is mainly uh, the basic understanding that I, I can actually share about uh, the difference, right? Um, and uh, if I can add on um, example, right? So basically, from from my side, uh, we are uh, we food lab. Uh, we started uh, two years ago. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, we started yeah last year. We actually um, uh, started two incubator program called Seed Lab. Uh, it's a social enterprise education program, uh, which is an incubator program that that powered by Petronas and Tata Consultancy. Oh, and during that time, right, uh, we are we starting to understand about uh, social enterprise through pain points. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we wanted to have uh, the business model and also the beneficiary. So, you wanted to tackle that through that pain point first. You wanted to understand what kind of pain point, what kind of the social issues that we are uh, having before we wanted to go into solution. 
for for, for food lab we would, we truly understand at that time where where before pandemic hits uh, youth unemployment rate is uh, is high and when uh, pandemic hits the the official rate of uh, youth unemployment is going crazy, right? Even the national rates at that before pandemic is three percent, and officially after uh, during pandemic is seven percent. Uh, and you know we want we wanted to start somewhere, so that's where we actually uh, during incubation uh, incubation time where we develop our ideas. We see that um, a lot of um, entrepreneurs in Malaysia, right? You wanted to impact the economy on on the internship side. You, you know that we have a lot of people who wanted to go into FMBs, uh, mainly because they 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 have this you know um they they have thought that um when you go into FMB uh, uh, a lot of turnover rate um or a lot of um sales and profit you can generate faster because it's a cash basis type um business. So uh, at the same time, we feel that uh, a lot of um, whether you are from technical or non-technical uh, background, we wanted to go into food ecosystem. Whether you are graduating from uh, culinary, um, uh, food, uh, hot, hotel, um, business, uh, hotels, businesses, and also food science, food survey. So those who are people who actually have keen and even non-technical, right? You you can see a lot of people who have non-technical background from food wanted to in, uh, go into uh, entrepreneurship. But then uh, we can see the pain points of starting home base or on your own to have an, an restaurant. It's about 200k to start your own restaurant. So we wanted to see that gap. gap. So that's, we, that's we, where we understand that is the pain point and how we can actually manage and close the gap. right? So that's where the model of, uh, of um, from that pain point, the model of the social enterprise or social entrepreneurship come in and you try to use that modeling to you know, uh, to, to tackle that issue and uh, main, main thing is to have that um, business, uh, it's still a business, whether you are social enterprise, uh, startups or uh, you started as a micro entrepreneur, it's still a business, you need to make profit, so you need to make your um, businesses to sustain and um, it's, it, it needs to be profitable so that it can sustain. That's a damn good explanation, Mrs. Alvi. But what's your take on this, Mr. Firaj? You're on mute, though. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Assalamualaikum, selamat petang. So, firstly, I introduce myself and Salat Bar. My name is Firaj. So, uh, we start our operation in 2019. Uh, Jan. Uh, Firstly, our idea is uh, we want to help urban poor in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, but after pivoting uh, from ideas to idea, uh, we realized that the, the 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 purpose of the existing of social enterprise is uh, we actually want to to want to help our community. So we sit uh, together with uh, all the founders, and then we come out that. Why not we helping uh, our own university? So uh, we located in Jeli, Kelantan, uh, um, where to find uh, a proper diet or healthy food is quite difficult. Uh, and by st uh, statistic shows that uh, 60% student in university does not consume uh, healthy diet in their lifestyle. So that's why we venture into this uh, business. So, uh, to differentiate between social, in social enterprise and social entrepreneurship is that, as for me, uh, social enterprise is those who do this thing, while social entrepreneurship is a system who support the doer. So, uh, generally, social, social, social entrepreneurship is what connect uh, between other social enterprise. So, uh, we try, we try, we try to. Uh, Sometimes, uh, bila kita nak uh, move forward kan, uh, macam-macam halangan ada tau. So, sebab tu kena ada social entrepreneurship ni, um, which mean uh, we are helping each other. Really. That that was like a very slight different explanation from the rest two of the panelists though, but it's, it was a very interesting one as well. So I think uh, the next question that I have is for Mrs. Zini. 
So how do you think a uh, social enterprise actually um, is different from a normal business that we have right now? All right. Um, as what you know, Zahibi and Firas has been you know um, telling us that actually social enterprise is the same thing as whatever business that we have. Is it what make it differs? Uh, social enterprise is focusing on social impact. So um, having Actually, having this pandemic uh, is a blessing, <laughs> uh, though that it's it's a bit you know hard. It's a blessing to know of uh, many things that has been exposed, especially the COVID nineteen pandemic has exposing um, systemic inequalities of the global economic system. So, um, I contoh, uh, take for example, very uh, uh, uh example in. Again, Negeri Sembilan, because I'm focused in Negeri Sembilan. Sorry, guys. I'm a bit, a little bit biased. But taking example from that, uh, like I said just now during my first point, there's many people who are involved in um, Pasar Malam and so on. So when COVID-19 happening, so they, they have to close, shut down all their uh, 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 tempat Pasar Malam. Tu lah. So they have to shut down and everything. So... Um, uh, with that shutdown, they just uh, apa nama dia bergantung di tempat tu untuk mendapatkan uh, to get some you know to get uh, to support their family. So <coughs> having social enterprise um, with the research social enterprise gunakan and social enterprise ada is helping to understand the basic needs of of, of our entrepreneurs. Um, lagi lagi peniaga kecil. So what Siapa yang dia support, how many people they support, and why they doing this? Why don't they just go to job and um, etc. etc. Many things. So um, having again, I said having COVID nineteen is good because it's exposing the inequality system of this social enterprise tackling on the inequality things that is happening in the world that is happening in Malaysia especially. For example, at food lab, kan? Just now they said they do. Uh, catering certain correct me if I'm wrong, Zabi. So I I'm I'm quite familiar with Food Lab, but not remember because I have few friends. I I don't remember their names lah. So um, Seed Lab also I quite I quite familiar. So I had Roshan, uh, one of my friends who work with uh, Seed Lab. So they said like okay, Seed Lab is uh, focusing on you know uh, things are social enterprise and so on. So at Toki currently we're new and so on. We're still learning on the part of you know on how. Uh, we want to really help people with this economy. Uh, sorry, with this business uh, entrepreneurship activities. Um, having having our beneficiaries, our ten beneficiaries, uh, is good enough. But to support them, as as our program uh, created for six months, it a bit a little bit of uh, you know because I'm not just working for this. I'm working this part time, so I'm doing this part time. So I have another work. So a little bit much. I'm commitment. So that's why a little bit much I'm not help them is, uh, is for every founder of social enterprise need to commit because you're promising the life for other people. So that is much um that is the res- biggest res- responsibility and that what made different from other business. For example, in business that we have ML- MLM or maybe agent dropship style, it's different from social enterprise. Social enterprise because every single thing in agent dropship it has been you know it has been. Create it for you. You just blasting, blah blah blah, doing whatever you want. But for social enterprise, we want to make sure that the people are our, you know, the people are our. We call beneficiaries lah. We want to focus on the people's life. We want to focus that their life. We having created and change their life a little bit from here to here. So we're thinking like that. Not only people, but there's the social enterprise that focusing on animals, and there's the social enterprise that focusing on plant. There's a lot of things. It's like an ecosystem. So if you're helping plant, you're helping people, you're helping that, you're helping this. Have you heard Agritech? Agritech is one of my friends. Agritech? I don't remember. Lah. So one of my friends, um, I, I received an award from MSGA before. So when I received that, one of my partner who received that, who founded Agritech something. So that one, um, she helping uh, petani uh, in Sabah to, cre- uh, to to appreciate all the plants that, have, that they have been ni. And then she 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 ajar the petani on how to market their their product by by telling the nutrition the, the nutrition of the goods of uh buying from them all the organic style and so on. So she helping that. 
So people who founded such enterprise is actually a, a, um, a bridge for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and the customers. It's actually the bridge. We are the bridge. So we not not saying that we're like the, 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 the business are different because we're not focusing on to make a lot of money. We're focusing on to to help people at the same time. Um, to impact them, to impact their life. So that's how you 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 will see in social entrepreneurship. It's all about aspiring. It's all about uh, helping people's lives. All about making making change and all. So you can see that in all. Um, actually, social enterprise. Some people uh, in in Malaysia, Zahabi and Firas, I think they will think like us, much like NGO. But actually, you know, it's like much NGO. But actually, social enterprise is. Uh, registered by SSM, so we we have to register by SSM. We have to pay tax one day, something like that. So different like NGO, but we um we have the accreditation, right? So uh, if we get the accreditation from Magic and so on, so we can you know uh it, it will reduce a bit our tax uh by again. Okay? So yeah. I, I'm yeah. So that that's kind of different. That's why you can see the rising of social enterprise, but they don't understand that social enterprise is all about a genuine heart. For you to help people, so Junior had that not not only businesses of the making a lot of money, but also to help people. So that is, that that is like a, a clear difference. That was a brief explanation. I think you know, as a person who are in a couple of NGOs, I think it means so much to me. You know, when we are doing something that gives back to the community, right? So as you said, COVID nineteen, yes, it is a blessing in disguise somehow. And I think the clear difference is who are the beneficiaries from the social enterprise and also. The business, right? And also, Mr. Ferris, I think you might be interested with that agri tech. That sounds like a great collaboration for you, for you know, Salabar, because you know, almost the same vision, right? Yeah. So I think, uh, Mr. Zahabi, I would like to ask you one question over here. Where, okay, how does um? I think we had like a brief explanation what social enterprise is here and there, but um, if you would like to brief more on social enterprise, you could. And also, how do you think um, social enterprise actually obtained the legal status? Like um, as what Mrs. Zini addressed, that we get a uh, accredited by Magic, right? So can you explain like more on it, and maybe you can break this down for our audience? Okay. Uh, let me let me let me start as a uh, a brief on the on history of Malaysia on social enterprise lah. Uh, as much as I can remember, uh, if I can remember, two thousand sixteen, uh, Magic started to uh tap into social enterprise to social enterprise uh, accelerator program. That's where a lot of um, you know social enterprise like um, uh, Grab Cycle, uh, Picha Eats comes comes in. They started from um, we uh, back like 2016, 2015, right? Uh, they are uh, like DGBG started in 2012. They started because have they have this uh, you know business model that wanted to impact into uh, certain certain criteria. And uh, like Dini said, it's a social enterprise or impact driven enterprise can be not just for uh, people, but it also can be on uh, environment, whether you are uh, on energy, on sustainability, on agriculture, and sustainability on, on water, uh, you name it. Uh, and it can be related to SDG, sustainable development goals, right? So that's one thing. And uh, even before social enterprise uh, name uh, sexy, uh, we, we actually have a few companies who already started because of their business model. We, if we look back, uh, for example, company, I think 2008, 2006, 2007, something. Uh, you know TLC, True Loving Goods Company, uh, a detergent. Uh, 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 because my background is actually coming from FMCG. I have I'm I'm graduated in food biotechnologies and working in in uh, in industry before. So let's say it's uh, it's, it's under fast moving consumer goods, right? So uh, TLC um, founders, right? Uh, she actually came from um, Rocket Baxter um, background. Uh, I think GM, so she tried to impact uh, her beneficiary from from uh, their workers and to uh, itself. They she started doing this model and then you know selling the goods and at the same time get that uh, profit or um, to impact to their beneficiaries back, right? So that's even before uh, you know social enterprise name is really as established as what uh, we have today in Malaysia. So from there. Uh, we we kind of like uh, going going slowly, and I think uh, when Magic uh, started to adopt uh, this social enterprise and trying to push as well as then to, they're trying to push uh, startups uh, ecosystem too. Uh, so uh, and and 
at one level the government itself uh went taking all this business model and wanted to put in 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 our government agenda where right now we are having um medec who govern the the social social enterprise activation right so that's the bit part of the history and if you ask me whether it's a legal status yes it's a legal status uh where everyone wanted to be accredited right um whether you know in university you wanted to be accredited like serin you have this uh in 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 industry food industry you wanted to have like gmp hasab those those thing uh in in other business you wanted to have like you know uh, blend l'oreal and so on you wanted to uh, uh get the genuine status so as much as that um uh, social enterprise also have the same thing where like i said before um when medic uh when magic started um to have this uh accreditation in 2018 uh and adopt by medac and it's now called social uh social enterprise basic social enterprise uh which is the level 1 level 2 is social enterprise um accreditation and level 3 is social enterprise uh, accreditation class the benefit is when you have uh, when you already um you know applied for it you are in the database so at the moment in malaysia we have 400 of uh, 400 of social enterprise that is uh, accredited under the database right so what we need what you need to do uh, this is to for for the audience right uh, if you want to, you have that uh, that dream to start a social enterprise and you wanted to do it properly right structurally so you can actually go to medac and apply for social enterprise status a basic uh, and you can also go to magic where you can actually understand about buy for impact you, know, you get you get more you get more information how actually uh, social enterprise uh, doing and uh, when you go into uh, uh, social enterprise accreditation right you get this uh, benefit on either tax exemption as a social enterprise basic uh, accreditation and when you go to SE plus you able to give uh, you know a tax exemption to those who actually give you uh, funding for example yeah those are those uh, some of the benefit um of course uh, government right now are doing some of the grants right not uh, last time you have grants to magic and at the moment uh, if i can say uh, SME corp are just starting their first uh, program uh to impact uh, social enterprise of course uh, when you wanted to apply for the grant under SME corp they wanted to have like a, a proper program where you can actually impact the beneficiaries whether you have to train people those those uh you know those those thing that actually uh, uplift the the beneficiary um yeah I think I gain a lot of I don't know I'm I'm sure the audience gain a lot of knowledge but personally as a person who is like currently starting up and you know a, a social enterprise so i think i gain a lot of knowledge where can i you know get 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 some grants because because uh, if anyone would know how to start up a social enterprise i think the first place we look at to is magic but i think it's great to know more more and more organizations who are actually coming up and also funding social enterprise so i think that would be a starting point where we can you know have or expect more social enterprises in our country So I think next I would like to ask a question to Mr. Peter. I think he's been quiet for for quite some time now. So how do you think a uh, social enterprise could actually compete with the other current businesses that we have right now? Okay, thank you, Samira. Um, so how social enterprise uh can compete with other business ventures? So uh the the main the main uh or the important thing that uh why we are called social enterprise because we are not selling we are not just selling our product but we are selling our 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 mission or our value that we want to help our people or our community so um i think i think uh, that is uh, the difference between uh, social enterprise and uh, traditional business venture we are selling our Why, why, why we are here? Why, why we start this uh, business? Uh, so as for Salat Bar by Fightopia, um, the 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 main or the first uh, issue that we want to tackle is uh, the availability of uh, healthy food for student. So why we running the business? So we we got one problem which is uh, our supply. So that's why we are bridging. Uh, our our business model is we bridge uh, between demand and supply, where we 
uh, hire local people in Jeli uh, to be our contract farmer. So we supply them with our uh, integrated uh, hydroponic system. Uh, we subsidize for them, so they will plant the crop that we want, and then the uh, the crop we will buy from them. So from that, we bring that uh, crop for, to our cafe, and then we supply. Uh, we we change it to uh, demand for the student staff, and also local people in commu uh, Jelly community, uh, the uh, healthy healthy food. So. So yes, uh, the the main the main uh, the main point that I want to uh, tekankan is that uh, the difference ataupun uh, the uniqueness of us as a social enterprise is that we are just we are just not selling our product but we are selling our mission to help the community. So I think the main point is where you understood what is the demand in the current location, right? So when you know the demand in the current location, so you get to like compete with the current businesses that we have right now. So I think as a, as a student of UMK, so I'm well aware of Celebar. And it's an amazing effort because I think nobody knows like, or nobody, when I personally get, uh, uh, um, you know, when I personally spoke to my friends about Celebar, yes, we do speak about Celebar. Then, um, so the, the one thing that we discuss is, I think the one thing, I think you have actually achieved your mission because I, when I spoke to my friends, they said that, you know what, I start actually eating like healthy lifestyle, I start eating vegetables after salad bar. So I think you've already, you know, achieved your mission. So keep going. I think we should branch out to more universities out there to provide more healthy food for our students. So that's like a great effort from our side. Lepas tu nak tambah, nak tambah sikit, uh, dia macam, uh, if we really understand our target market, our buying power kan. So, uh, dengan memahami buying power target market ni, uh, dia bagi lebih advantage pada kita. Macam kita orang uh, for salad bar, our buying power is not the student actually. Uh, our buying power is uh, parent student tu. Uh, so, kita macam macam kita faham uh, apa yang sebenarnya student nak kan. So, yang dia yang yang buying power untuk produk kita tu sebenarnya parent dia orang bukan dia orang so kita just supply apa yang dia orang nak sebab kadang-kadang uh, kebiasaannya uh, bukan kebiasaannya kadang-kadang social enterprise ni kan dia collab sebab satu yang most important thing yang dia tak uh, dia bukan tak faham tau dia macam miss out is uh, dia buying power it's a very good explanation mr peros thank you for that so I think next I would like to ask both two of our panelists tonight. So which is gonna be uh, Mr. Zahabi and also Mrs. Dini. So I think I'll go first with Mr. Zahabi. So how do you think um entrepreneurs respond to our society's problem in a creative way? Because I think social enterprise is a very creative way to uh respond to our society's problem. So how do you think uh the entrepreneurs do respond to it? And then, uh, especially now during the COVID-19 uh, situation, because yes, it is a blessing in disguise in one way, but one way it's a terrible pandemic that happened that shook the entire world. So what do you think about that? So if you ask uh, whether how the entrepreneurs uh, respond, right? I think uh, the creativity came uh, through the business model, right? Uh, where you, you when you know that uh, there is a gap, there is a pain point there, or there is uh, a need, right? To tap into a certain area, so that's where you establish your uh, business model. Uh, either in speed in this pandemic, of course, a lot of companies pivot right from their uh, their main business model, uh, and those who are actually pivot usually uh, either social enterprise or startups company. So you you wanted to full to make fulfillment, so that's where uh, the the creativity happens, uh, and um uh, and as a whether it's you are a startup or a social enterprise, uh, I think the main uh, superpower of us of uh, as as a as an entrepreneur, right, uh, is uh, four things. We have that attitude, uh, the effort that we put in. We have that uh, uh, talent uh, that we believe, right. Uh, we have that um, creativity on our business model, on the on the people, on our team, right, and the creative team uh, uh, that's in uh, that that wanted to do the impact. You know, and then the last one is the speed. So you need to have that speed. So those those four things are the main pillars, uh, especially uh, when 
whether you you starting uh, or you wanted to pivot during that pandemic i and i think if if i can actually give an example right for food lab so our creativity um when pandemic hits we have this uh, uh we just uh we understand that there is a people cannot go out you know people are buying through online delivery and so on right but then um and but then at the first mco we know a lot of micro entrepreneurs are actually not able to operate yeah uh, at the start it's only companies who are established uh, big brands or fast food are able to actually operate right and when uh, when when um we appeal to start operate then government open to more micro entrepreneurs um uh, the, the second problem coming in is uh, the technology adoption is not still low at that time at that time so but at the same time we actually validated that okay this is why we need that uh, the best in kind the silver lining that is why we need to to adopt technology the digital is come is is, is a need is a must right uh, and um there is a, a few companies actually starting to understand oh, okay if you want uh, if if the the rental is high and so on how you want it to become an entrepreneur of uh, on under food food umbrella right so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, existing uh, businesses who are targeting small medium and and multinational companies a big brands especially company which is for us we are tapping into micro entrepreneur that is the first di- difference second one when other uh, operators are uh, or cloud kitchen uh, where uh, using um, you know rental or real estate mode which is you just give a facility a rent a facility and the rest uh, your team have to do it by yourself for us we have to we we know micro entrepreneurs have a lot of problem they are small team so we come to help them into a service of end to end so that's where we step into not just you using our space as uh, to to cook to to make food we also step in uh, we help you in terms of positioning your food you know getting the uh, your food uh, pictures designs uh, to tap into your establish your social uh, social media and then the last one is the most important thing is actually when you already have your food skills and so on is a market access so uh, for example right now we are, we are we are in the main uh, market like grab food panda shopee and also uh, we have our own platforms but you also uh, but we you, you must know that micro entrepreneurs are not as uh, having uh, not, are not as similar as big brands who are have their brands and everyone knows or then then you have like a lot of customers repeated customers you already know mcdonald's right you, but if you have this brand a uh, no no one knows yet so the way when we wanted to help uh, on on our business model where we tap into uh, uh you know make make a pet food where you can actually place it uh, under the ready to hit category where you place that food in a uh, petrol station um we we place it in independent mart called delivery mart so at the moment we have 26 uh in um might or convenience store or in independent kiosk where we actually place the food so our food entrepreneurs have this uh, posi- uh positioning their food not just on online delivery but also offline b2b and they have two uh, we come and the other side of uh, during that pandemic they also have this you know multiple location uh, catering uh, at that time because you don't have events but companies right they do have online meetings so they wanted to cater from 10 to to 50 location uh, so we actually cook uh, all the the food that they need and uh, using all the online deli- uh, um, the riders delivery we we send to 50 50 location at one time for example uh, those are the creativity come in where you use all this uh, you know uh, resource or uh, 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 yeah or this resource to tap into the opportunity that have yeah thank you Um Mrs. Zini I think I would like to hear your point of view on this maybe Right thank you so much for the question I think uh, what I think to answer your question is we're living in digital world so as like a world actually so it's a it's a, a VUCA world as you can how do I jump eh I explain what is VUCA so VUCA is actually um I, my my mentor always use this like it's a volatility uh uncertainty uh just a moment i so um it's a volatility 
uh, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So it's all about, you know, it's all about digital. It's all about um, uh, connecting with each other. It's all about to to re to brand positioning your own brand. So um, how uh, so to answer your question, how to um, to tackle? Sorry, your your question is how to uh, Shamra. Your question is. Uh, so is it, my question was like, um, how does entrepreneurs actually respond yeah. to the problems in the creative way, yeah. especially so, pandemic? Yeah. In a creative way. So it's as as I mentioned about VUCA. So that goes the answer when um, all entrepreneurs now have to shift everything to digital and also all uh, digital approach. Uh, not only using the social media, there's a lot of things. Uh, for example, a website. Uh, uh, I had a website that is made by my tech mentor. So actually, I didn't keluarkan duit pun. So my tech mentor said to me, one day, if Tokyo become bigger, then you come to me and then you pay lah. But for now, I'm doing this for good to to make sure that Tokyo can, you know, take it to, can impact people. So digitalize your businesses is very important right now. People reaching out to you via digital. SMS, WhatsApp. Telegram and so on. I'm talking this uh, different from Zahabi because I think um, I'm I'm uh, I'm doing a lot of communication right now. I'm working with uh, some of communication or uh, uh, NGOs and all. So communicate with your customer and also your beneficiaries are very important, definitely, because your customer is the user. So the the, the customer wanted to know what goods uh, if they, they if they pay for ten ringgit, for example, they wanted to know what uh, what are the things that they they will get and to add that they get to get to help people so it's all about you know marketing whatever benef our beneficiaries uh goods uh to our customers so to in a creative way of social enterprise is uh not only selling that what far uh, fira said just now not only selling their products but also, but to sell their motivation right it's not all our motivation it's about their motivation they wanted to um, help their family. So we are currently helping them in a creative way by, you know, by uh, introducing to our networks, to introducing to our clients, to help them. So by doing that, digital digital businesses are very important. As we can see in budget 2022, um, that has been announced, the allocation of money for budget uh, uh, for keusahawanan has been increases, which is good. Um, and it's about time to reset things of, uh, of economics because it's it's like economic recovery for us, uh, especially for people who are doing businesses and ber bergerak sendiri. So uh, what I said that is peniaga-peniaga kecil. They're truly affected. And if, even only if uh, the lockdown being imposed again, <laughs> totally they cannot survive. Correct, Zahabi? So they cannot survive, survive because that's the only thing that they they, they being uh, apa? Uh, bergantung. So if the lockdown imposed again, they cannot survive. But how do how does things that can help them to survive is doing digital. Not only communicating in Facebook, but communicating in Twitter, for example. Twitter is like a um, touch, um, a, a, a fast touch uh, information center right now. Facebook is great because many of people are in um upper rural area using that because. I'm, again, uh, for example, in Negeri Sembilan, we had uh, people, we had our one of the uh, duduk di Jempol, uh, Jempol Bahau. Sorry, Jempol. Bahau Jempol, yes. So that's the correct way. So Bahau Jempol is a rural area. So they, it's a pekan, it's a small pekan. And uh, mostly, our beneficiary said, ramai customer-customer dia tahu pasal diri dia is because of Facebook. So, uh, which is marketing dia jadilah dekat Facebook, dekat situ. Sebab she been setting a lot of things. And dia tak tahu pun, digital literacy dia tak banyak pun. But when, after that, when we, we trying to, you know, um getting our mentors to help them to have that certain knowledge of digital literacy, then it's good for them. And as you can see, like Zabi said just now about magic and all. You know, SME Corp, um, Tekun and all. Hari tu, I baru masuk uh, SME Corp punya uh, program about digital literacy, uh, digital literacy in scan, keusahawan and so on. There's a lot of free um, digital literacy um, untuk audience yang tengah dengar untuk masuk and enroll. Ada yang kena bayar, ada yang tak perlu bayar. And if you tak perlu bayar, better you masuk. Sebab 
you do that is you think that you you use Facebook every day, but it's different if you make it on uh, your businesses. So about your businesses, kind of like macam you need to set it up your place, tempat yang you do do, and so on. Baru lah reach out to people who use that, something like that. So it's a deep process of learning of to digitalize your business. Not only you just tak pula, I just put hashtag hashtag hashtag, but they don't understand that if you put hashtag, for example, I'm talking about communication. So for example, you put hashtag in WhatsApp. They don't know that the hashtag does not work point. So, um, of course, lah, they will say, oh, tak apa, letak hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. It's like orang orang kampung, but they don't know. But, of course, again, uh, in a creative way, uh, for Malaysia especially, I, I would say, this I got feedback from my, you know, from my beneficiaries lah, because they were, they were studying in, uh, they were staying in a rural area, right? So, they think that macam, all our approaches, approach is all uh, in English, which is, okay lah, a bit of language barrier there. So, I hope to see a lot of organization that will be doing all this webinar and all to have that, you know, um, uh, a simpler uh, understanding uh, orang-orang yang beneficiaries nak dengar dalam bahasa Melayu dan bahasa Inggeris. Tak kisah. The language barrier is there because they don't understand. They might say, apa ni? What is social impact? Apa tu? Kusan saya tak faham lah. Something like that. So that is like the reality, man. So like, um, people are talking about it like this is a language barrier. Can you speak in uh, Malay? Because I don't understand. Because I live in rural area. You're talking to me on uh, social enterprise, impact, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. So you must, you must take into account people who you help within the certain area. For example, for Zahabi is different. It's in Banda. So okay, that's okay. But the language barrier, for example, in Terengganu, I, I had one connection from Sabah, um, he's been doing, I heard about him, he's been doing like a social enterprise, um, ada uh, tempat pengumpulan sampah, so in Sabah, dia duduk dekat tempat, uh, dia duduk dekat uh, atas laut, betul tak? So, dia letak tempat pengumpulan Sabah dekat, uh, sampah dekat tengah-tengah uh, perkampungan tu. So, dekat Sabah, dekat Sabah, if you can see, sampah terlalu banyak dekat dalam perkampungan tu. So, ha- a social enterprise develop a system, uh, develop a technology uh, to put dekat tengah-tengah uh, uh, apa? kampung tu untuk serap sampah tu. So like, I'm like, wow, that is that kind of innovation that I cannot think. Of course, the engineers, the food tech like Zahabi, uh, Firas and all, because I'm coming from different uh, background. I coming from international relation, which is like different, different technologies pun tak ada apa benda, tapi I like tech. I love that. So that's why I believe I bought research on the, the uh, uh, dekat Pekamu Sabah tu. I'm like very innovative and uh, even, you know, the the people there are setting, oh, itu tempat pengumpulan sampah in layman terms. You get me? So like if you can say, oh, ni tag ni untuk ni ni, dia takkan faham. So the language barrier explanation is very important. I mean, uh, communications are very important. Uh, marketing and so on, very, very much important because you, 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 you helping people you want people to, you want customer to understand what your, uh, what is your initiative to help the industry, what is the industry product, the marketing, the things, uh, you must to allocate some of the money for that. Lah. And uh, of course, people are, who are doing entrepreneurship is a full-time, uh, you must, you know, it's a full-time uh, worker. So they do that for full-time, for example, uh, yang dekat PKS, PKS, kita tengah kerja kecil. Dia buat benda tu full time. So, uh, you know, encourage them. Uh, for example, to, to, to because I can see in the question, how to encourage them uh, untuk pergi ke next stage level is by what Zahabi has been said, you know. There's a lot of programs. Tapi tak tahu. So, that's why um, the, you know, that's why it membalik. So, how do we do that? As a social enterprise, it's the gap, the bridge of the gap uh, from uh, our agencies, agencies and our PKS, PKS, or your negative connection. So uh, I hope that clarify your question, Samira. But what I want to highlight is Buka, a uh, very challenging world. Uh, Buka world is a very challenging world. <coughs> well, we had Binance, Finance, Crypto, and so on. And uh, as as we can see now, we had NFT and so on. So like. There's many things and it's a very challenging world. <coughs> so people who are coming from, you know, people who are in rural area, people who are doing kecil, sebagai kecil, kena faham benda-benda ni. It's good to have that kind of knowledge so that it can uh, uh, help you to go to the next stage.
Thank you. So that was a very clear cut explanation, I think, on the nationwide. So that was amazing. And then, um, Ms. Ferris, uh, Mr. Ferris, actually, the next question is from Ms. Ferris and Ms. Ferris. Okay. So the question I have is, so uh, what do you think are the challenges actually faced by our local entrepreneurs in coping with the pandemic situation? I know there was like a brief stuff going on, but right now I think uh, in detailed explanation, what would our, um, you know, what is our social enterprise are facing like currently and how are they overcoming? So I think I'll go first with Mr. Cross. So uh, currently during the pandemic, uh, I think the biggest problem that social enterprise are facing is that um, legislation, uh, legal from the legal from the government. Uh, so by, by looking at uh, from the first phase of uh, PKP uh, during the PKP one, and now uh, we are reaching uh, the last phase of uh, pandemic is that the legal is always changing from uh, let, let's say let's say I'm, I'm giving an example uh, the operation hour so the operation hour is uh, from the starting uh, local local uh, entrepreneur like yang macam warung-warung ke gerai-gerai tepi jalan semua tak boleh operate uh, so macam uh, for, uh, like us uh, we are lucky because we operate, our operation is in university so our our legal is depend on uh, university lah. So if university allow us to operate, then we can operate. But um, to go to to go generally is that I think the legislation uh, legislation uh, legislation uh, given by the government how how we are coping with the uh, legal uh, come out uh, from the government. So the uh, other than that is. Um, I think uh, focus, focus. So beside beside uh, legislation, uh, that's why sebenarnya social enterprise ni kan, dia kena keep changing, keep vibrating so that orang kata be real, be real on what you are doing. Uh, so kalau kata let's say if uh, plan A tak jadi, come out with plan B. So uh, supaya orang kata uh, idea tu tak mati tau, dia tak, tak terhenti kat situ sebab one thing that we need to realize is that uh, semua, uh, everyone can jump into social enterprise but tak semua boleh sustain dia yang yang ke, yang kita perlukan tu uh, bukan setakat idea tau tapi people who run the idea so ada orang macam um, so, uh, when my first move in social enterprise is that my mentor is juara tau so uh, juara ni dia memang tegas dengan orang lah memang saya cakap dia memang tegas kalau kita datang if we came uh, with an idea dekat juara so kalau kita bincang dengan juara tadi tak boleh tak payah stop uh, masuk je traditional business uh, buat dulu run run dulu kalau kata boleh kalau nanti uh, after run after one or two years boleh then baru jump in kalau tak boleh stop uh, so kena the, the masalah dia bila berhadapan dengan pandemik is uh, our focus so, so yang first tadi uh, legal so second focus I think um, the final one is uh, the biggest problem uh, funding kot so macam bila 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 business tak boleh jalan so dia akan affect uh, mula yang pertama sekali macamlah saving kan so saving kita kita kita, kita, kita nak sustain we need, to sustain we need to sustain our business so, uh, uh, Yasmin, uh, Yasmin kalau macam Yasmin kan, dia Econite, dia Econite punya founder uh, Macam uh, mi, apa, Mr. Dini juga, dia benda tu awalnya part time So, komitmen dengan apa, orang kata masa yang macam ni yang diperlukan untuk running social enterprise ni So, kalau untuk yang full time Ah, dia lagi orang kata bila bercerita about funding ni dia lagi masalah besar lah. memang most apa most biggest problem lah so ah, cara untuk cope dengan masalah funding ni itulah dia somehow kena private so daripada plan yang you ada so you kena private kepada plan yang you rasa 
uh, bukan you rasa tau dia yang you think yang boleh jadi uh, daripada plan A ke plan B sentiasa kena pivot so macam yang uh, I cakap tadi kan uh, first when we jump into uh, social enterprise uh, our our first our main idea is to help urban poor um, bila 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 bincang discuss apa semua kan so benda tu dia dia perlukan fund fund yang sangat besar tau macam uh, kita katalah uh, idea pertama kami tu kami nak buat satu sistem hidroponik ke flat PPR so dia memang orang kata nak kena ada uh, kena ada link dengan government dengan uh, majlis bandar dan sebagainya so kami rasa benda tu kami tak mampu uh, we can't afford so that's why we back to our community and we start start up bawa flat PPR so Uh, untuk tekankan balik uh, tiga benda yang I, I think the biggest problem is how how you deal with the legislation and then uh, uh, how you want to stay real uh, and your focus and lastly funding oh it was it was quite it was i know it is very challenging to be there though So I think what's your take on this, Mr. Zabi? Because you're you're on like a bigger scale, right? So how would you, what's your take on it? Oh, alright. Uh, I I have to agree lah with uh Firai uh on what he, uh he's pointed out, uh the legislation, and uh the funding part. I, but uh if I can actually elaborate a bit more, okay, let's look back uh on our landscape in Malaysia, right? Whether we are social enterprise or not social enterprise, because the pandemic hits everyone. So before for social uh, before pandemic uh, happens right, so on our database like we try to that we try to actually uh, uh, trust as much as we can on our our uh, our data the government data right. So we have actually seventy five percent of micro enterprise in Malaysia, right? And then we have uh, from micro we have uh, small. From small we have a uh, medium and then uh, national to multinational, right? So seventy five percent of uh, micro, twenty two point five of uh, um, small, and then two point something uh, on medium, and the last one is national to multinational company is one point something, two point something, right? So but at the end of the day, the those who uh, those who are contribute into our GDP, right? Sixty percent of it is actually under under Uh, under multinational, forty percent of it is under small medium, uh, uh, micro small medium, uh, uh, enterprise. So you know that's that's the 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 break of it. And then with when pandemics happen, right? Uh, so not all com- uh, it happens quite quite sometimes. Uh, one year plus, let's say, right? Uh, on and off. So we are often being uh, told to have uh, six months of uh, backups, right? on our uh, company capital right right working capital but then if let's say right uh, on uh, even for food lab when we started right september 2020 uh, the real operation started right um, so the um, we, it takes about four months un- until our minimum viable product mvp uh, when we tested all our our business model it takes four, four months and then it we takes on uh, back uh, on this month Uh, and the the last two months, uh, where we able to um the market is actually open, where we able to actually uh run uh, properly using our best best case of business model, it's actually seven months, right? Which is in one year we have five months where we are actually being there, uh, um, hanging hanging there and just to either you know uh on, um we have to uh occur our burn rate so so that is our case imagine other micro enterprise who don't have that backups right who have to sustain so those are the things that like fira said the funding is that is, is one of the problem the, the at least the working capital a lot of uh, a lot of uh, aid or grants that given by government to Malaysia, uh, to to our our um, businesses is actually in the form of uh, cap capital expenditure capex which is not really help, helping and sometimes uh, those aids uh, that given uh, you know 3000 those 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 first aid right uh, is also as a as a working capital is actually not enough right so but that's the dilemma 
where you wanted to have that safety first during that pandemic, but at the same time, you wanted to have that uh, economy run, right? So, so at the end of the day, uh, what, what, um, you know, it's, 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 it's truly a dilemma. And, and if, uh, that's is where I can actually say that you, if you wanted to go into entrepreneurship, it's a, it's a really uh, hard thing, I can say. It's a really hard thing uh, because, um, you know, I came from a background who are working as a, in a, in a, in a in professional industry, right? So you have that one scope or department that you do. But when it comes to uh, running a business, you have a lot of things that you need to, you need to have. You have to know about finance, you have to know about marketing, sales, business development, you have to know about operations, right? You have to know about a lot of uh, things, um, which is why uh, a best, uh, the best case of uh, running a, so a social enterprise or, uh, or startups, you have a, an ideal team. You know, that's where they have CEO, CFO, C COO, CMO. That's, that's, that's the reality of today, if I can actually give some some uh, advice for those who wanted to to come into uh, uh to become business uh, to run a business or become entrepreneurs right um you have you need to have a, at least a team of two right so that you can actually challenge each other uh, on your ideas on how to run things well right so um back to the topic where where we can actually say that is uh funding is one of the things that really challenging to sustain and and uh, another part is um, during that time, uh, during that pandemic hits. So that's why uh, when I said that one of the pillars that uh, any entrepreneur need to have speed, right? To, to have creativity. That's where you pivot. You have to pivot fast and you, will, you need to see what is, the, what is the needs at that time. You know, a, a lot of, uh, during that time, a lot of, um, a lot of businesses pivot towards like uh, making a service, uh, do, doing a, uh, you know, doing a food, uh, food kind of thing, business, doing um, uh, selling, selling uh, this, uh, I don't know, uh, not PPE, uh, something like PPE, uh, you know, the, the uh, what we call, uh, 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 face masks, right, the PPEs and so on. Those are the things that, at that time. So those are the things that, actually can generate incomes at that time. So that is why a lot of businesses wanted to sustain. They, they took what is supply and demand at that time. It's not about your uh, business model anymore. You go into what is supply and demand. Yeah. So those, uh, but but I can say, uh, you know, a lot of, it's, it's not that really easy. And if I can say, uh, you know, uh, as a Malaysian, right? Uh, uh, it's what, what we lack is actually information, you know? It's not easy about, about uh, yeah, it's sometimes it's about talent itself, but at the end of the day, it's about information. You know, we have like the, you know, uh, only 70% uh, uh, people who are actually read, uh, uh, not reading, right? Only 30% who are actually reading. 70% uh, usually, even when it comes to reading news, they only read titles. The, right. So when you have the, you have a lot of loopholes in our ecosystem and loopholes in all, all these things. That's make it more the difficult. Reality. Yeah, that's the reality. It makes me more difficult. It makes, and that's why it, at the end of the day, 70% is actually, 75% is actually micro. And, and if I can actually relate to not just uh, uh, employ, unemployment, right? Or youth unemployment. Imagine everyone wanted to go into MNC, but the slot is not there. How you wanted to go into my uh, and you have to go to micro uh, medium company or small company, which is may probably not able to 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 pay you a better salary, and then at the end of the day you have to uh, either you want to start to on your own as entrepreneur uh, and go in jump into as a micro entrepreneur, but then do you have all what it takes to become entrepreneur? Uh, the whole system we we actually co collapse not just on social enterprise but all, everything. And right now, our uh, our our country, right? They wanted the they we are trying our best to to improve. I can say we are trying our best with our with all this budget, right? You can actually understand there is an effort to um to 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 know to tap into uh, the ecosystem to to um, to make uh, this Malaysia better place for startups, 
for social enterprise. You know, even startups have are actually juggling, right? Their their access to funding is uh, where is is not near uh, easy in Malaysia. That's why a lot of startups going out, right? I, imagine social enterprise who are not running for uh, for profit driven. They are running for beneficiaries too. So to be really uh, be, be this is a question that I can 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 give to everyone back to the audience. Really think well, be thoughtful on what you wanted to really do, what is actually happening. Yeah, and but at the same time, that is also why you have to support a lot of social enterprise, right? Because they are actually, uh, you know, uh, they are making they wanted to make profit. They must make profit, right? But at the end of the day, because they are regulated, right? They they are regulated. Their finance is regulated. When you have um, you know, when you 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 have this accreditation from a debt. So in that accreditation, when you are regulated, your finance is regulated, those profit that you give to that social enterprise is actually going to the beneficiary. That is really why why they are being they they being get they getting their social enterprise accreditation. Yeah. Those are so you have to have at least a trust into social enterprise. Yeah. So that was um, amazing explanation. Of, it, it is quite challenging because you know you're having a social enterprise in a bigger scale. So I think your challenges are more even more bigger, right? So, um, Mrs. Dini, I have a question for you. So how do you think um like you're in NGO as well as well, right? So I think you will know the clear cut difference between uh, both social enterprise and also um how to say social uh, I mean NGO. So how do you think entrepreneurship could actually drive societal societal and also economic change before the pandemic and uh, before the pandemic and also after the pandemic? So it's going to be like, you know, before pandemic versus after pandemic. Well, um, if I were can, you know, um, to, to add that, uh, to focus on NGOs, because I'm doing NGOs right now, um, <clears throat> of course, social enterprise, so, well, NGOs, how we do that is you can see now in the news and all NGOs voice has been, you know, highlighted. People are uh, people are looking uh, at NGOs voice um, to 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 demand for change and all. Uh, <clears throat> but for social enterprise, for example, um, uh, <clears throat> I have been said this many few times. We are the bridge. Uh, we're helping them. We're helping the entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurs uh, to get whatever they deserve like what Zahabi said so it's the the, the 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 thing that all founders or future founders of our audience uh, will be watching think about mm, do you really want to be the founders as that is the biggest respons responsibility you had and um the founders is not just being ceo founders things that you know has been circulated in social media oh uh, it's fancy to to call you as a ceo and founder blah 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 but you do it the behind that is the biggest responsibility that you need to you need to you need to uh, pegang. So um, during the pandemic, uh, people it's good. Uh, media uh, social media uh, has been rising. The sentiment of social media has been rising. But think about next um, the 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 uh, post pandemic. Does it still relevant? Uh, because people are currently the physical. Uh, meeting physically, doing physical event, blah blah blah, etc. etc. Does the webinars and all need still relevant? So think about that. But I would say it's arising and it will still be relevant. It's just the matter of we need to think of a uh, different way. Not only do this thing, talk, 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 blah blah blah, but also to connect all after the webinars, connect the audience with the with the speakers and all, so that they can help on to give uh, a long term. A discussion with the audience of course the audience the audience come here just to click on the views um uh, watching all this live but they want to actually uh, for example zahabi has that different background firas have different background me have different background so they wanted to connect with all the speakers because they need to they, <clears throat> of course they know they want to ask for some help so before the pandemic it has been done you know there, there's a lot of webinars been happening actually banyak Cuma, it has been highlighted because we will stay at home. So, during the pandemic, we will stay at home. So, benda tu macam, oh, okay, webinar ni, webinar ni, sampai dah terlampau banyak webinar. 
So, like, there's a lot of things. Uh, so the difference between things that have been has been ha- happening for all organization, not only social enterprise but NGO, is this uh the 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 media present of whatever things that has been going. If you if you have the network of the medias, you know, try to get all the medias to cover your story. Your story are very important for our for all the founders. So that's why I that's why I highlight that. It's fancy though to have that the CEO thing, founder thing, and so on. But think about it's not only about you. It's about people that you've been helping. You've been promising. It's the same thing as politics. You yeah, you know you promise all this all that, but you you don't deliver that. And that that is sort of like my charm, uh, talking just talking. You know, so <clears throat> that's why it's important for you before you as for the audience before you thinking about to start. It's good to have a lot of startup, not only Toki. Toki is a startup. I I I have to admit that Zahabi and Firas, I I uh, start a, uh, a startup founder, which is just started on 2020. And but for NGO, I have been working for seven to five years now. So I think um, all the startup founder have to think about all these things that has been uh, that that has been highlighted by Firas. Funding, uh, legal wise, registered, uh, accreditation. Um, what else? Uh, a business model that is very very important. What is your business model? The first thing that investor wanted to ask you, if you were trying to apply to a grant and all, is what is your business model? Kalau you to tell, you also don't know what is SFDD and so on. A bit hard for you to you know, a bit hard for you to survive as a founder. But if you get all this connection, you know, had the uh, you you hear from Zahabi, you have it from Sira, Firas, from me and all, you know, inshallah will definitely will help all the founders who has been, you know, hearing all these things, uh, to help you to understand whatever, uh, pre package before you, uh, 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 launch your businesses because I'm sure that uh generation bef- uh, after me have different different ideas, different different kind of ideas, you know. Um, social enterprise, social innovation is all about ideas, different ideas, different innovative um, way of you selling your product or services. So, uh, for example, uh, I don't know Zahabi and Firas uh, uh, familiar with this, Ibu Perno. I always talk about Ibu Perno. Ibu Perno is, um, his Shamira knows me well, I'm very much um, uh, enthusiastic about women empowerment. That's why Tokyo is focusing on uh, women uh, development. So Ibu Perno has good business model on helping the mothers that has the skills of cooking, which is, you know, it's very inspiring. They had, you know, dengan apa cake pandan pun, they can make like macam fancy cake pandan and so on. That, that, well, that was very inspiring. They're helping the mothers and all. And that is kind of business model that all the founders here who hear us today uh, have to take in like okay so these are fmb is uh, the thing that i want to venture so what are the business model uh plant agritech is the, the the things that i want to venture for example in negeri sembilan it has been viral kan yang food tech company pakai dekat ozi eh tak ingat pakai the sticker untuk maintain the stay fresh yeah stay fresh yeah stay fresh so yeah i went to mama last two months and then i saw him i'm like eh this guy, and he's from the Grisman, I'm very proud of him. It's just because of, again, lah, Zahabi, the rise in social press, it's like, yeah, lah, biasa, biasa, dia budak-budak ni buat business. And then now, WHW, World Economic Forum, right, uh, cover his story. And it's very inspiring. But, sayang lah, the talent has been sell to Japan, eh, Zahabi. Japan, kan? Yeah? Uh, I'm not sure, but Zafri <laughs> wanted to move out from Malaysia lah. Yeah. Yeah, so macam, you know, that is the talent of Malaysian talent that Kita dah waste. So this is about time for the government, for whatever corporate and so on, to appreciate all the talent. You know, I I I truly believe that our next generation, not my generation, will have different kind of new ideas because kadang-kadang I pun tak faham apa yang orang cakap. <laughs> no no, you know, my sister, my brother, you know, some oh ni 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 mobile legend blah blah blah, and then oh boleh buat business so I'm like, why? You can tell, you know, that there's different things, different generation approach. So, um, as you know, what I the message that I want to, to to just you know to highlight for your from your question, Shamira, it's about to appreciating our talents, our founders yang tengah dengar sekarang ni. Sebab 
the fashion is him the talents are very uh, unique and nanti jadi macam zafri balik zafri was very aspiring founders using the 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 uh, stick press using the stickers uh, untuk apa uh, kekalkan freshness of the buah right yeah perolong chef lah yeah yeah so it's very you know you you cannot think you know you you never would imagine that Malaysian talent have that but sebenarnya memang banyak cuma kita tak figure out je so just appreciating them before and after ke whatever you know trying to reach them out because you know I know Food Lab since before Food Lab memang famous so but there's another people Masala Wheels you know helping catering siapa lagi um, Pita Eats of course lah Pita Eats helping yeah. refugees of course when we talk about You know, there's so so much sensitivity eh, talking about helping immigrants and so on. But for me, it's about all, all humanity. That is the purpose of social enterprise, helping all humanities regardless of anything, which is good, you know, because they live in our country. We want to treat them well. We want to make sure that their life is good too, as as much as we are. So helping all people, different of social enterprise, different organization have different focus. So just, you know, appreciate their talents lah, because they're very creative and innovative. Uh, <clears throat> Toki was still figuring out. I still have to learn a, a lot with Siraz and Zahabi. But inshallah, one day, um, you know, it has been going on. Our mentor all every day calling me. Ni ni ni, focus, focus, focus. Because I'm doing this part time, like what Siraz said. So, uh, because I'm really now focused on NGOs who focus in women empowerment. But hopefully, one day Toki can, you know, help people in the Greece Milan more, something like that. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mira. I think I I could actually very relate to Dini when you actually spoke about business model, right? Because you know my social entrepreneurs actually focus on education, and then we were really clueless on how are we gonna do this because it's very much focused because we know the outcome but we didn't know like how to actually set that out. So that is like quite a revelation. You know, the yeah. best business model for education is tech Mal- teach for Malaysia. So teach for Malaysia is a social enterprise before it's an NGO, then they what business models uh, they what seeking entrepreneurship. So teach for Malaysia is good, uh, for for you to, uh, follow their business model, not only copy, okay, it's just you follow <laughs> and you know you learn the hard way on that part, chancela. Yeah, because I think our uh mission is quite different, and that was that was a very you know wanted information. So thank you for that, Kadini. And then okay, Mr. Zawi, I have a question for you. So um, so the landscape of um social enterprise and social entrepreneurship in Malaysia. Um, involvement of the young people. I think more youngsters are actually coming into this, right? So, including myself, actually. So, how do you think? Um, do you think it would first of all? Do you think actually it will affect the trend of the market? So, if it does, how how do you think it does? Okay. Uh, let's look at the numbers, lah. Right. Okay. At the end of the day, we are going towards aging society, right? What does it mean? Yeah. Yeah. It means that uh, right now, a lot of young people. Who are, who are actually a pool of people who are the biggest number, the biggest chance, right? Right. That's so we know that the the driven of the economy is actually the young people. That's number one. Uh, either as a uh, either as a consumer or either in term in terms of startups or entrepreneurship, it's actually young people who come comes into right. Okay. Uh, if we look into numbers, I think British Council uh doing their numbers last time. Uh, a lot of leaders or um, you know uh, startups uh, founders or CEOs uh, actually age between 25 to to uh, 50 yeah uh, so if we, i can say uh, 35 36% is actually between those who are 20, 20 uh, 31 until 40 uh, and uh, 40 to 50 is actually 30% uh, i think it's Uh, 12, 20 something is actually around uh, for those who are 25 uh, above, uh, 25 to 30. So if we put in together, uh, that's already around 70 something, right? Meaning it also shows that a lot of interest from the young people who wanted to go into entrepreneurship, right? Yeah, and if we can actually see from, um, um, I, I can see uh, if I can share from my community lah as data. Uh, a lot of uh, startup founders who are young who, who also actually having a technical background 40% 50% they having the technical background right so uh, the uh, you know the, the appetite is there lah for for the young people right 
uh, they want to involve uh, into entrepreneurship uh, but at the same time the ecosystem need to be need to be ready right yeah we we either we we learn as we go or we learn uh, 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 the hard way I, i'm not saying that uh, we we are really really ready because i can see uh, a lot of loopholes still there in 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 our country right uh, i can say okay people are going to indonesia because of the volume people are going to uh, singapore because of the currency and also the funding um, you know uh, facility that over there and then people go into vietnam thailand and then malaysia right number 5 Yeah, yeah. Even we have, we just have our first unicorn, right? <laughs> so, uh, even if we actually see, uh, uh, you know, Grab, right? They started as a social enterprise, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. They pitch that they are pitch as a social enterprise because they wanted to uplift the the taxi driver, the income growth. Yeah. Right. So, uh, if you look into their uh, social impact report, you can see how much difference they already being being there, but. At the end of the day, yes, they get funding from Kader at first, but because of the 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 uh, our our you know that at the time the funding landscape is not really well, they have to move to Singapore, right? Yeah, so we we consider loss uh kind of like a, a homegrown uh, startup, right? Yeah, no. again. Yeah, so <laughs> so that's the reality, yeah, right? Um. So we try to to improve. We we have magic. We wanted to improve through uh, NTIS sandbox right now, but focusing on technology. But at the same time, I can I can actually say, uh, you know, the 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 policies that make it, makers right. They when when they see technology, they push into technology at all. Uh, we but sometimes they they uh you know forgot about uh you know um uh, even other old technologies like. Uh, healthcare, bioscience, and so on. It's also a technology. It's just different from yep. computering thing, right? So you and just to add, uh, be yeah. they make it like a bit, a little bit difficult of the policies. Uh, you know, it's fancy to have that NTIP and so on. But you know, for example, Firas venturing in food businesses, me, yeah. yep. Zahabi, and all. A little bit, you know, nanti kalau nak mohon for grant. What if the food businesses, food technology, that they will be there? Yeah. But uh, the policymaker does not understand, you know, on that is food tech are very important, blah blah blah, biotechnology and so on. So they don't, mm. they don't, you know, they don't measure. They just use that fancy words. Mm. So I totally agree with Zahabi on that. Part. Right. So, so at the end of the day, you know, the that's why I said we are not well informed. You know, that we don't have really much information, right? Uh. So it's it's a duplicate effect when our education as a person is not not really good. You 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 fail to understand, and if you are a policy maker, you are part of the government. You will fail to understand how what is the pain points of entrepreneurs. So it will be another effect. Uh, just to give you know another another example, right? So so when when we uh fail to understand all of it, uh, we actually uh not progressing. Yeah. Uh, and that is where uh, we lost our talent, right? Yeah, there's a um, but that's those talent are the new talent. At the same time, um, you know, it's a dilemma uh, because the landscape is not the ecosystem is not helping. Uh, the youth is wanted to go to to enter, but the the ecosystem is not helping. So they they either move out from the country, or um. If they they don't want to become entrepreneur, when when they are like now twenty one, twenty two, they look at the acquisitions not ready. They want they don't want to become entrepreneur, and when and they ask they wanted to go into uh, to become professionals working in the in the industry, which is which is also good. But at the same time, like I said, the industry is packed of full people already there. Even our you know uh, retirement is still still sixty years old, right? So there's those uh, when you are you have retirement at sixty. And those young people want, cannot enter the workforce, so that's that is where you have, you know, a, a lot of uh, um, some of uh, what happens is uh, you try to pivot uh, to say to all these young men, or go to further study because you wanted to buy in time, right? That is that's the reality. At the same time, 
uh, when you are actually buying time for for those people who for the study and so on or maybe they are unemployed right they are actually under uh, um they consider uh, out of workforce when they are out of workforce their their talents uh, actually put it under either low skill middle mid, mid, middle skill and not even a uh, uh, high skill uh, talent so that is where another part when company big companies wanted to hire you don't have that pool of people tech tech, tech especially like tech talents and so on they try to get expatriate to come in or oh, those those to few tags is really uh you know tremendous if you look at at the bigger picture yeah um uh, and i i can actually say you know um at this moment what we can actually have a um um the 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 industry the economy is drive by the um private sector and uh we need malaysian to trust private sector uh to actually uh you know um uh trust by by supporting um social enterprise startup use the local uh, local products and so on right um 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 you know support the local uh local or home homegrown businesses so that they are the one who able to grow and employ young young people right when they grow they can uh, uh employ young people so the duplicate effect on employment is uh, will be happen yeah it's really it's re- to be honest right the, the question is really hard to answer but um because there's a there's a lot of things in the supply chain that, that is actually effect, uh, affected yeah I I think Mrs Harvey I think all of you would agree with me I think using the hashtag support local is not just enough I think we have to do more than you know just using the hashtag the act is for local the act is needed yeah the act is needed because a lot of stakeholder will think like we cannot use this hashtag nanti lain terasa and so on but it's, it's about time to actually appreciating your support for uh, your your local product because as you can see in, in Indonesia Shamira like they really 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 yeah. So they really, you know, they really appreciate their local products, and they really push through their local products rather than other products. So, which is, I agree with Zahavi totally on that part. Okay, awesome. But we we don't have much time. We're gonna finish our forum, so I think it'll be last one final question for Mister Firas. He's been really quiet, so I think I want to get him speaking. So Mister Firas, I'd like <laughs> to ask you. So I think the main aim of social enterprise is actually um the social inequality and that is why that how social enterprise derives from right so um so uh, there there are the market failures are possible in the traditional system if you are uh, maybe if you're not enough to meet the ends but I think uh what do you think the primary problem of the social enterprise is where they cannot scale up to the enterprise to the next level that means they can't grow right so it would be that you say redundant right so um so why do you think in this is happening so i think we could finish the forum with your end of it okay so what think so think i do it ah ah okay so uh regarding how to scale up our business is uh before we want to scale up as uh, our business as our company as our social enterprise, enterprise why do we what apa kenapa kita perlu scale up betul ke kita perlu betul ke kita perlu scale up kenapa so kalau ada jawapan and then um, ma- ma- masalah dia sebab uh, dia macam ni tau dia kita ni kita social enterprise kita punya main mission is to help our community okay community yang kita mana-mana mula-mula kita venture venture into yang tu yang kita nak tolong sebenarnya. So uh, masuk Firas kat sini a uh, bagi bagi bisnes tu sustain dulu. Sebelum sebelum kita sebelum kita nak scale up tu sebab a uh, apa dia 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 boleh bagi kepada scale up ni. Dia sama ada company tu grow bigger in fact grow bigger. So why not instead of your company go bigger venture out apa semua which yang uh, we are we are really not sure uh, macam mana success ni benda tu so why not kita fokus untuk untuk sekarang ni kan untuk untuk zaman yang baru kita nak lepas pandemik ni kan why not we focusing on how we want to scale up our impact 
dalam komuniti yang sama tapi macam mana kita nak scale up impact kita so macam Salabah by Fatopia um, during the pandemic uh, macam, macam kami, kami hire student as our crew tau so we pay uh, by hour lepas pandemik ni habis je yang masuk uh, stage ni yang stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 uh, jumlah crew kami uh, meningkat, dia, dia tak ramai tapi kami berjaya tingkatkan kalau macam sebelum ni kami ada 5 orang sekarang kami dah ada 10 orang so mungkin sebenarnya bukan scale up dari segi oh you masuk negeri ni, you masuk negeri tu, you masuk negeri ni tapi sebenarnya scale up dalam komuniti tu sendiri dia orang kata kalau buat benda besar tapi nilai dia kecil baik buat benda yang kecil tapi nilai dia besar tu je Thank you Mr. Pira, so that was very nice I think it, it, it fits really perfectly for an NB you know, baby steps and then it makes a bigger impact So I think we've come to the end of it. Um, as much as I want, really, I really want to continue the conversation. It was so brilliant, such a brilliant setting session. But I really couldn't. We're gonna end the forum. So um, thank you so much for our panelists, Mr. Dabi, um, Mrs. Zini, and Mr. Superas for joining us. Um, uh, from the side of Artistic Malaysia, we're uh, we're really thankful and honored for ha to have you guys as our panel today. And then uh, we do hope our viewers who are watching our live tonight um, do gain some knowledge. Like myself being moderator, I think I gained a lot of knowledge. So thank you so much for everyone watching our forum. So I'm Shamira Nasrin, your moderator today. So this is Hall of Aspire, a place to satisfy your taste for knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Kardini. All right, we are off <coughs> live, right? Right. right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, oh, by the we'll, way, we'll we'll get a photo first. Is it okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, hold on, yeah.